uh, meaning that I'm going to open the uh, factory I.O. Plus, I'm going to open up the Do More Designer software. That will be 2.2 version. I'm not, I, I'm not connected to a actual PLC, but I am going to use this emulator. The, the BRX, the Do More BRX uh, PLC, they come with an emulator. So let me just uh, disconnect from my Wi-Fi and get into the uh, airplane mode. Here I'm going to open up the sorting station software. This is the ladder logic that I created. And the Do More Simulator is going to be launched with a local host connection. Oh, I had that, that problem before, which the emulator runs. And if it encounters a bandwidth or no such a fast connection, what it does is just crash. It happens to me a couple of times. So let me see if it comes up uh, right now. So when I click on the Do More Simulator, okay, this time it runs just perfectly. All right, let me move uh, move it from Roam mode to term, uh, term mode. And let me go uh, open up the software, the high speed version two. And connect to the emulator so we can download uh, this uh, a lot of logic and let's go online right now this is uh, what I have this controls the factory IO which I'm gonna go uh, over here and open up the factory IO software this is the latest version uh, and it has uh, a standard scenes. I'm going to open up sorting station and the, for this project I'm thinking of using a protocol called uh, Modbus TCP which is uh, this one over here. I'm going to be using the client. As far as the I.O., I'm going to leave all of them um, configuration that would be uh, default. You see, this is my local host address. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to change anything up here. So I'm going to move on to uh, my controller. And this is the, all the I.O.s that I'm using right now, which are just uh, standard I.O.s. Uh, I'm going to uh, click on connect. And right over here, you're going to see a check mark ring says that I, I am connected to my PLC which is the simulator right over here this is the PLC running on my computer which is emulating a BRX uh, PLC so let's go into ROM mode over here and as far as my uh, PLC goes I have my yep right here I got my ROM mode over here and everything is ready to go so I'm going to walk through the, uh, each one of the uh, uh, subroutines that I wrote so I can explain them um, uh, to you what happened. Meanwhile, let me go to my factory I.O. and change my view to that of my panel. And let's go ahead and click on Start. Let me go ahead and... Uh, let, let it run for just a little while, so you know what, what, what it does. Meanwhile, the sounds, I don't, I don't know gonna, how, it got, how that is going to influence the physical sounds of the machines and my voice. But notice that I'm sorting based on basses on this shoot. The basses are going to drop down. Here, we're going to drop down the leads, and over here, we're going to drop down the actual bases. Uh, one thing that I wanted to do is to make sure uh, be optimized my movement. Notice here that it stays close, 
because two of them of the same items went through so that way it's just pretty much optimized so I'm not uh, moving back and forth unnecessarily so let's go ahead and do the counters yep so far we got those uh, counters over there I didn't have the need to run in auto mode because I have right now I'm, I'm not recording that not uh, programming those but let me stop it just for a little while okay notice how the uh, this uh, gate that came up and I can erase my my uh, counters here and restart my application all right let's uh, let's go ahead and and explain what the logic is if you go over here the first thing I'm going to talk about is the main uh, in order for me to do this uh, movement of these actuators I need to know my location of each part in relation to this vision sensor that I have right here that is reading the type of uh, item going, going through the sensor uh, below the sensor so we got numbers as you can see here when I go to my dock all tags right below here you see the number here changing this is the vision sensor giving me a specific number based on the uh, item uh, going in the conveyor so what I did was I created a shift register that is able to monitor this movement because if I read a certain number here I know that that number belongs to this actuator that actuator or this actuator so I was able to do that with a shift register and I'm going to show you right now uh, this is what I did on my main screen I got my my the first of all I got my uh, run subroutines which I have uh, six subroutines running uh, continuously right over here right below I created all the three chief register one two three each of the chief register uh, belongs to each of the actuators right be right below well uh, as you know this uh, chief register in automation direct requires a, a data and a clock so it can uh, move forward and right over here my vision sensor is giving me a number I I compare that number with an equal to my uh, to the number of the of each part and this is the way I create the movement of the clock which therefore drives the rich chief register right below I do a comparison so if uh, the, my vision sensor tells me that I got blanks this is the actuator responsible if it tells me that I got two, or number two or number five that means I got my basis this is responsible otherwise uh, the rest of them which will be number three and six that's how I put the, my data uh, meaning one or zero into my chief register so I'm logging some information as far as the counter goes over here I'm zooming in all the total getting my part per minute over here and I wanted to do maximum parts but um, this is another improvement for uh, factory IO which I'm thinking of doing a video next time so this is my data uh, that I'm, um, I'm, I'm acquiring for the sensors which is basically the uh, counters in my turn it's activated and my exit uh, gets also activated I do a one shot and increase my counter over here then I will do a math expression so I can uh, add all of them and put it right over here which says counter total as far as panic control goes right over here I deal with the buttons and the selectors on the panel enclosure which is this baby right here 
This is where I, I program on this subroutine called panel controls. This is where I program all my controls, including my emergency stop, which activate the red light. If I just want to continue, I can't because my emergency stop uh, uh, button, it's held down. So I have to click it again, so it'll uh, spring back. And then I'm able to continue the, with the uh, routine all right how that how everything works uh, let me see how it works uh, I'm going to show you my how I did for my base products my leads and my blanks all of them are exactly the same the uh, input and outputs are the only thing that changes for that I went ahead and created a new code block that code block is always running I acti as you know I activated it right here and it is always running. So what I did is a, a logic which is based on stages, uh, stage logic. Uh, and I went ahead and did this uh, timer. So I more or less got my chief register uh, actuation for this specific product. And what it is uh, seen by the vision sensor, as you know, it gets activated. Then I wait just a little bit, uh, just a little bit, uh, like a half a second, so it clears this area over here. So it is precisely positioned, so the actuator doesn't hit it too hard, and they don't fly away. Okay, below I move on to my second stage, stage number two. I turn on my uh, solder, turn uh, solder one and sort on the belt. Then I wait for the sensor that tells me that those parts are already out then I will go ahead and, and look at the clock first to see if I, if I have shifted and if I have moved on uh, from that specific bit which was right here I don't want to see that bit anymore so this is why I'm, I'm monitoring the clock bit once I get that I go ahead and, re and reset my turn on my belt uh, turning them off and then jump to my zero stage or jump to stage and start all over again this is precisely what I got for my short leads and precisely what I got for my other uh, blanks so uh, in just a few uh, subroutines I managed to create this uh, uh, sorting uh, station and it's running pretty good So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and, and drop a note and let me know uh, what uh, problems have you encountered uh, doing this with any other PLC. It doesn't have to be automation direct. It could be any PLC that uh, preferably uh, supports chief register, which is uh, almost all of them. All right, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.